Hi, my name is Steve Shu, and I'm one of the candidates running on the free Harvard, fair Harvard platform for the overseer position. I was asked to record a short video in order to say a few things about my qualifications for the position and also about the platform of free Harvard, fair Harvard. My background's in theoretical physics. I've been a professor for many years now, and I'm currently an administrator at a Big Ten university. As vice president for research at Michigan State University, I oversee a research budget of about $600 million uh, on a campus of 50,000 students and 5,000 faculty and staff. Therefore, I feel I have fairly unique insight into the major problems that are facing higher education today. Let me say a few words about the platform, the free Harvard, fair Harvard platform. Let me start with free. I feel that the in income on the Harvard Endowment is so large and so large relative to the amount of money that Harvard derives from tuition each year, something like a factor of 25 times larger, the income alone on the endowment on an, in an average year is something like 25 times the size of the tuition revenue, that Harvard should expand access by making it less expensive to attend. And I'm aware that for families of limited means, Harvard is already quite accessible and uh, quite generous in uh, financial aid. But there's a middle population of families um, in the middle class, uh, all the way up into, say, I would say the lower, if I could say a lower upper middle class, uh, for whom attendance still is quite a burden. A family might easily spend a quarter or half of its after-tax income in sending a kid to Harvard. And uh, I think it would be a competitive advantage, given the financial position of Harvard, to increase its generosity even towards families in those groups. I do have a problem with making Harvard free for children of billionaires or exceptionally wealthy families. And this is a point on which uh, I and, for example, Ron Unz actually disagree. Um, but I think this is something that, uh, in terms of directionality, all five members of our coalition agree on. We do want to make Harvard more accessible, and we do think that the large size of the endowment and the large endowment income make this a real possibility. So this is something that I intend to push for uh, if elected, but perhaps not as hard as uh, Ron would or as hard as uh, the slogan Free Harvard might suggest. When it comes to fair Harvard, I would say that the main goal of our platform is increased transparency. It is not the elimination of affirmative action. It is not the elimination of all preferences. But I think it is reasonable to ask that Harvard release more information about the types and sizes of preferences given to applicants. I think the whole Harvard community would be interested to know exactly how the admissions office is making decisions each year. I think there is a reasonable case to be made that some level of penalization of Asian applicants is going on. I'm not saying the evidence is conclusive, but uh, historically in the 90s, it was acknowledged both by Stanford and by Berkeley that uh, this kind of discrimination against Asian applicants, Asian American applicants, was going on. And those universities subsequently made significant efforts to fix those problems. And in the early 90s, which is actually when I was on campus at Harvard, there was a Department of uh, Education or Department of Justice investigation into allegations that Harvard was discriminating against Asian applicants. Perhaps coincidentally, or perhaps not, while the investigation was going on, the admit rate for Asian American applicants hit an all-time high. And once that investigation concluded without a finding, the admit rate for Asians went down and it stayed 
significantly lower than that early 90s peak for uh, what's almost now several decades. And this low, relatively low admission rate for Asians has persisted even though the population of college age Asians in the United States has doubled, has roughly doubled since that period of time. So there's circumstantial evidence that Asians are not getting a fair shake at Harvard. And in fact, I think within the Asian American community in the United States, there's a, there's a broad sense that this is the case. Now, it may not, in fact, be the case. It may be that Harvard is fair and that because of the way that it conducts admissions and the categories through which people can gain admissions, Asians are not disadvantaged in any direct or intentional way, but perhaps just as a side effect of the way Harvard does admissions. But I think all these issues can be resolved through transparency. And I think it's to Harvard's benefit as an institution to have members of its board of overseers who are interested in fairness, in transparency, and in making the admissions process uh, as efficient and fair as possible.